Just last year, there were 31 children who died here in Missouri. If you take a look with me down in this direction, you can see the street has lots of holes and bumps and problems. There's a lot going on behind me here at the Columbia Police Training Center. You can see the flashing lights. Crews are finally starting to get the trailer pulled out and on its way, but traffic is still completely stopped westbound lanes of I-70. I just got on scene, but I want to show you a little bit of what I'm looking at. I spent about 30 minutes in different parking lots around the city today, and I saw it firsthand. This car is actually one of the only indications of the almost five and a half inches of snow Columbia received this week. You can see on this table next to me about 30 of those arrangements. That's 30 of 250 that they're getting ready to send out. Okay, you have got to see this. A fisherman in San Antonio caught a massive tiger shark. Neighbors have told me this is a relatively quiet neighborhood most of the time, but this morning it was anything but. One neighbor said he woke up at 5.30 a.m. and found police busting through the door of this residence behind me. Turns out that that was actually only a very small part of a much larger operation that took place today. Drug trafficking, prostitution conspiracies, and illegal firearms, all happening within the Boone County limits. Officials say multiple locations were involved in Columbia and surrounding areas. Police say two of the residences were drug houses. U.S. Attorney Tammy Dickinson called it a major takedown. This federal indictment dismantled a major drug trafficking organization in Columbia. Today's operation not only disrupts that organization and the flow of cocaine and crack cocaine into the Columbia area, but reduces the level of violence. But it wasn't simple. Investigators say Boone County employee Kristen Sled leaked information about a search warrant to a target before the warrant was served. But they say they found out about the leak just in time. If the leak had not been detected, the lives of numerous law enforcement officers would have been in jeopardy. Columbia Police Chief Ken Burton expressed a hope of a safer community. It's my sincere hope that these indictments and arrests and our continued cooperative efforts will improve the safety and quality of life of all law-abiding citizens in mid-Missouri. And a warning for others. The message to criminals and thugs that I'd like to send, if they continue to engage in violent and lawless behavior in our communities, the consequences for such behavior will be dire. Laughter, toys playgrounds. That's what childhood should look like, but for many children in our area, it's not reality. According to records obtained by KOMU8, one Kansas City child known as LP to protect her identity spent months locked in a closet where her mother starved her. Often as adults, we don't want to be wrong. We don't want to falsely accuse somebody, so we wait. And that puts children's lives at risk. The 10-year-old weighed only 32 pounds when police discovered her. I asked the state for documents surrounding her case, and I got over 500 of them. This is what I found. LP had a stack of problems, which started long before the Children's Division got involved. We've seen cases where there have been some indications that something has been going on with that child. Um, <clears throat> and maybe the report was not made initially. During the first hospitalization, doctors said LP showed signs of malnutrition and issues of neglect. Her life was in danger, but only a short time later, she was back home. Kelly Schultz reviews most actions of the Children's Division and determines if anything could have been done differently. She says for a child to be taken away from parents, a certain threshold of evidence must exist. Investigators would have to see that more than half of the evidence found proves abuse. It's just that pit in the stomach feeling where you just know it's, it's off, but it's not 51%. A specific part of Schultz's department deals with cases ending in fatality, like these ones. Just this year, Deontay and Shanika Evans are charged in her 23-month-old daughter's death. Dearis Ricks was accused of striking his son's head against a hard object, resulting in the child's death. And here in Boone County, Anna Steele and Cody Baker are charged in her 8-month-old daughter's death. LP is considered lucky compared to those children because LP lived. A call to the Child Abuse and Neglect Hotline saved her life. Every time we see a tragedy, whether it's a nationwide news story or it's a statewide news story, you see neighbors, you see family friends say, oh, I always thought something was going on. Something just didn't seem right. Specialists say oftentimes people don't report because they're nervous about ruining a guardian's reputation. It's tragic that as adults, we worry more about the adults in the situation than the safety and the lives of a child. Sharice Tebow works with mandated reporters across the state and says usually reporting is the best way you can protect a child 
who doesn't have a voice of their own. It's still our responsibility as adults to protect children. So we don't need uh, proof, we just need suspicion. And it's that suspicion that could save a life. If you can't beat them, eat them. That's researcher Mark Morgan's motto. Chili or fish taco or burrito, con queso, omelet. I've tried it in all these different forms and it's absolutely wonderful. Morgan's referring to the silver carp, a species native to China but that is now threatening local species across all major Midwestern rivers. Everything was going fine until flooding occurred and then the fish escaped captivity. Then they got in the Mississippi River and they've been marching upstream ever since. More than marching, they're flying. You may have seen video like this from around Missouri, and conservationists say they need to go. Have the, the biological or ecosystem um, issues of them competing with our native fish, but you also have the sociological thing. They're, they're competing with things that anglers are more interested in catching. So now Morgan plans to get rid of them one bite at a time. Silver carp can be served in a variety of ways, and this is what makes it really fun and interesting because you can put it in food products that people don't normally think of that would be acceptable for fish. Morgan developed recipes, conducted taste tests, and invited local businesses to join the cause too, but he has seen some hesitation. Well, most of the time people think about carp as a bottom feeder, feeder and they have a negative perception of it automatically. A trend Travnicek encourages against. Give it a chance. Uh, have an open mind. Uh, you, you'll probably be surprised. And, like predicted, after people try it, they seem to enjoy it. When served Asian carp, most people don't know initially, but then when they find out later, they're totally surprised. They cannot believe that it's a fish product, and then when I tell them carp, it's even, even, even more surprising. So Morgan won't give up anytime soon. It's an ugly fish, there's no doubt about that, it's bony, but I can resolve all those problems. Once you put it in a tube, um, cook it in a pan, you don't remember what it used to look like. And if helping people forget what it looks like gets the fish out of the rivers, Morgan's up for the challenge. Rule number one, follow the directions quickly. When you walk into Mrs. Newroar's classroom, you see color, you see students, and you see learning. But it's what you don't see that has her determined to change teaching in Columbia. I think poverty is a very real part of our job now and dealing with these types of students and oftentimes they're so misunderstood. Christina Newroar sees that firsthand. It shows up as being more explosive, they love less patience. Some teachers call it learned helplessness, but really what it is is just a product of their environment and so what we need to do is modify our teaching instruction in order to support those kids. She says it's all about engaging the children. and understanding where they come from, but not lowering expectations. One of the big things we're focusing right now is thinking about empathy versus sympathy. 12 Columbia teachers attended a conference this summer where they learned tools for teaching students who grow up in poverty. Our teacher leaders are the ones that are paving the way for so many of our new initiatives in CPS. And this is one I think Columbia as a whole we can't ignore. Neuror believes in the power of teachers. Teachers make a difference and they are the single greatest difference maker in a child's life. And that's a difference she sees every day. Reporting live in Avaz, in Boonville, in Cole County, in Morgan County, in Fulton, in Ashland, in Columbia, in Jefferson City, Shay McAllister, KOMU 8 News.